Hello, hello! This is Father Adam coming to you in English from Las Vegas on this, the 24th, excuse me, 25th day of May. I'm obviously very sad. I've been praying and reflecting about the horrific violence and the horrible mass shooting in Texas at the school where all those children were killed and wounded and the adults as well. And I'm praying for the families. I'm praying for all those affected. My heart is with all those families affected by this horrific mass shooting. I'm very angry that this is allowed to happen, that this happens. And I have a reflection that I have prepared this morning from early in the morning in my prayer and in my study of the Bible. I have prepared a reflection on this horrific tragedy that once again we are facing as a nation here in the United States. Salvador Ramos, the child that just turned 18, he's a child, who bought two rifles on his 18th birthday, was addicted to violence. On his social media, he warned he wanted to shoot other kids, saying, kids, watch out. This is on his Instagram Salvador Ramos was programmed by violent video games. We know this. Violent video games with blood shooting out and gushing out and people, people shooting indiscriminately everywhere. He was programmed by the violence all around us. The movies that Hollywood produces. The more violent, the better. This is what our children are filled with and what they are watching. Violent video games, violent movies, horror movies. They're playing violent video games. This couple came to see me because their young boy, 12 years old, is hitting his brothers and sisters. He's extremely violent. And they wanted to know what to do. What do we do, Father, about the fact that our child is so violent? Well, I said, well, invite me over to your home and let me speak with him. Let me see what's going on. And so I went to their home and I couldn't believe it. The child sitting in front of the computer playing violent video games. Exactly the same thing that Salvador Ramos was doing. We know this from news reports that he was playing violent video games. Hmm? Call of Duty was one of the violent video games that he would play. And he was the first person shooter in this game. This is what our children are allowed to do by their parents and by our society that thinks this is normal. No wonder that our kids are violent. Everywhere violence is all around us. And we have normalized it. We have normalized bloodshed. Our kids are programmed with this. And Hollywood normalizes this. 
The more violence, the better. Nearly everything coming out of Hollywood is laced with violence. Sexual violence, rapes, people hitting people, taking advantage of people, abusing people. It's grotesque images of blood gushing out of people. And parents are allowing their children to be part of this. Society is allowing our children to be fed with this. This young boy, 18 years old, he just turned 18 a couple days ago, was filled with this horror and violence. And so-called action movies with guns everywhere. This is what we are allowing our children to do. Parents are taking their kids to learn how to shoot guns. You're, they're buying them toy guns that, that look very real. They're buying them BB guns, Salvador Ramos. We know this from news reports. I've just been reading of interviews of people around him, his friends, the people around the neighborhood that he would shoot indiscriminately his BB gun out his window, out his car window. This is what he would do. Where did he get the BB gun? Somebody bought it for him. What is wrong with us? We are addicted to violence as a society. And the result of this, we are seeing over and over again, Hate, revenge, blood, guns, violence, violent movies, horror movies, violent video games, kids being told that it's okay to t tattoo themselves with 666, that it's okay to watch satanic movies, that witches are okay, witchcraft is okay. Just look at our society addicted to violence. Jerry Springer, for example, is just one example. Do you remember that talk show? So-called talk show where they would pay people to come and fight each other? And the people were glued to this. Do you remember Jerry Springer? Why are you not commenting? Comment about what you think about what I'm saying. People loved it. People loved Jerry Springer. They were glued to it. People hitting people. And now the main protagonist of the violence on the Jerry Springer show, Steve Wilkos, has another show and people are glued to it. In other words, I am sick and tired of people blaming God. Stop blaming God. Let's look in the mirror about what we do as people. People kill people. Hmm? People kill people. God is not in the control business. Stop blaming God saying, why didn't you this or that? Let's look at what we do and reflect on, on, on our societal norms and things that we have done and that we allow and that we have normalized that are causing this. So who's at fault in this? Well, we as a society, because we allow this as a society to be normal. We have normalized this. Violent video games are normal. Mm -hmm. People, you know, owning uh, uh, gun collections and showing them off. I go to visit somebody in their home and they're showing me off their gun collection. Why do you need a gun collection? Maybe one or two guns for protection, but to have a gun collection? <laughs> <clears throat> What is wrong with people? We have normalized this. And then we're surprised. And we blame God. BB guns, I mean, this young man shooting indiscriminately out his window at people, at his neighbors. <sighs> Somebody got him the BB gun.
Let's stop blaming God and let's start looking in the mirror. We allow it and we glorify it. We glorify violence. Just look at the television with WWE, the World Wrestling Entertainment. All over television and our young people love it. Hitting each other. Violence. People hitting people for fun. What, how low have we gotten as a society? Jerry Springer, Steve Wilkos, WWE. How low. And this low of society is now reflected because we have trained our young people. It's absolutely mind-boggling to me. We have trained our young people and they are trained to hit, to be violent. Violence is all around us and we glorify it. We put it on pedestals. We give Oscars for violence. Do you remember the last Oscars? I'm speaking. What happened at the last Oscars? Will Smith slapping on live television, Chris Rock. I'm speaking. How come nobody's commenting here? Will Smith slapping on live television, Chris Rock for saying something about his wife. And not one of those world famous actors who are put on pedestals and we put them forward as role models for our young people, not one of them got up and said, no, this is wrong, no. How can you do this? Nobody got up and said anything. They gave him an Oscar. They gave him an Oscar. And then the actors all around, I could, I could tell you names right now. I was watching this one by one. Oh, poor you. <laughs> they, they, they hurt your feelings. So you get to slap somebody? So you, you respond to hurt with violence? That's how we have trained our young people and we put this out there. It's out there, it's all over. It's at the Oscars. It's what our young people are trained with. Nobody denounced it. They gave him an Oscar. And a pat on the back. Oh, you poor baby, huh? Your emotions got hurt. So you get to react violently and we will reward you with an Oscar for it, huh? Violence and revenge is all around us. After the 18 soldiers got killed last August in Afghanistan at the Kabul airport in Afghanistan, the president of the United States, the current president, went on national television, you can look this up, at his first press conference and he said, we will avenge the 18 soldiers. We want revenge. And he said, we will kill you all one by one. What is that? Violence in response to violence. Hmm? A slap for a slap. An eye for an eye. Tooth for a tooth. Mm -hmm. Revenge. Mm -hmm. We will kill you and we will hunt you down. Revenge and violence. That's the government's solution. And that's what we have trained our children to be programmed with. Huh? Where's... The gospel is different. The gospel that we live as Christians is different. Jesus said, if you live by the sword, remember when Simon Peter cut off the high priest's guard's ear and Jesus responded, 
by healing the ear. And he turns to Peter and says, put your sword away. If you live by the sword, you will die by the sword, says Jesus. And he taught us something different. Jesus said, turn the other cheek. Pray for your enemies. Don't curse them. Don't call people monsters like they're doing right now with this young man. That's not the solution. Mahatma Gandhi said, an eye for an eye will make the whole world blind. And that's what we are doing. Mm -hmm. And we continue this. And we will continue to be blind. Don't curse them, bless them. It's the gospel of life, not the culture of death that we live in, that my countrymen, John Paul II, the Pope from Poland, condemned so vehemently. And he showed us, St. John Paul II, showed us when he was shot in 1981 and nearly killed by an assassin. What did he do? He went and he forgave his assassin, not vilified him, but touched him and kissed him and loved him. That's the way of Jesus. The way of love, not the way of violence, not the way of revenge. If you allow yourself right now to be filled with hate towards this young man, this 18-year-old young man, you will allow that to penetrate your heart and to start to destroy your heart and to affect your heart. Don't allow that poison to poison you. You are different. You are a follower of Jesus, a nonviolent Jesus. Mm -hmm. The one who went to the cross and who did not curse his enemies or those who spat upon him, those who were violent, he didn't curse them. He prayed for them. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's what our response should be towards this young man. Father, forgive him for he knew not what he did. Hmm? Forgive him, Father. We pray for him. We pray for his family, all the families that were affected. When the Talmud tells us that is the book of Jewish uh, writings that describes uh, the Jewish faith. It, it explains the Jewish faith. The Talmud tells us that after the people of Israel, the people of God were saved by being allowed to walk from Egypt, slavery to freedom to the promised land through the Red Sea. God parted the Red Sea and then God drowned the Egyptians that were persecuting the people of Israel, the people of God. And then there's a big party in heaven because the people of Israel were saved. And the Talmud tells us that all the angels are celebrating in heaven. And God is in a corner crying, all sad down. God cannot party. And one of the angels says to God, well, why aren't you celebrating? Aren't you happy that your people, your people, your children were saved from slavery? They walked through the Red Sea on dry land. They are now in the promised land. They are saved. Aren't you happy that your children were saved? And God looks at the angel and says, how can I be happy? And how can I celebrate when my children drowned in the Red Sea because all are God's children. All are God's children. Those 19 children that were gunned down in Texas are children of God and so is Salvador Ramos. He is also a child of God and his family is hurting too. Hmm? And if we are to be followers of Jesus and promoters of love and understanding and healing, that's for everybody, not just for some. Hmm? Otherwise, we allow that 
venom, that poison that is called hate, to infiltrate our hearts. Don't succumb to that. You are different. You are a follower of Jesus, a nonviolent Jesus, a Jesus who loved everybody. All are God's children, not just some. Once you start pointing out to some people and saying, this is a monster, this, is, this one's bad. Oh, no, 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 no. You're going down the wrong road. That is not the Christian road. So what should our response be? Well, to be sad, it's okay. To cry, you can kind of notice that I've done a lot of that today. To be angry and to look for solutions. Not to point fingers but to be part of the solution. Hmm? I'm not pointing fingers. I'm just telling you what is happening, what has led to this, and to find common ground solutions to change people's hearts, hmm? to change our hearts. When I was you know, a chaplain at Pelican Bay State Prison, the most maximum security state prison in the entire state of California, and I was visiting the inmates, one of the inmates was going to be transported. He was sentenced to death. He was going to be killed. And there were two groups protesting in front of the prison, one in favor of the death penalty and one against it. They were shouting at each other, shouting, kill him, one group was saying, and the other one was saying, no, let's save him. One was saying, kill him, and one was saying to save him. And I noticed there was one woman in the corner, and she wasn't shouting. She was just there praying her rosary, one bead after another. And so I approached her, and I said, well, why aren't you one with one group or the other? You're just here all by yourself. And she was crying and praying her rosary. And she looks at me and she says, the one that they are shouting about, that's my son. They're shouting over my son. He's my son they're shouting over. That's my son. She prayed, she cried. That's what God is doing right now in heaven. You know what God is doing right now? God is crying, looking at how sorry of a society we have created with the violence, mm -hmm. with how much we hate one another, with what we do to our children, with violent video games, with the violence on TV, with training them that guns are okay to shoot with BB guns. Hmm? The violence on our streets, the gangs, the abuse of children, the trafficking of children, the participation of children in porn, 18 year olds are exploited in the pornography industry, in the multi billion dollar pornography industry, and nobody talks about that. The violence that is inflicted on our children, how we abuse them. Mm -hmm. And it's normal in this society, normal in our culture. That's not the gospel. Salvador Ramos is just as much a child of God as you are and as I am. And the minute you allow the hate that led him to kill 19 children and two adults to invade your, invade your soul, you are becoming 
just like him. Don't. You are different. You are a follower of Jesus because violence begets more violence. You know, when I was a priest in Crescent City, California, January 1st, 2013, I received a phone call from the bishop that said, don't you dare come out of the rectory. Father Eric Freed was just murdered in Eureka, California. And he wasn't just murdered, but he was tortured. And we think that there is a serial killer out looking to kill priests. Don't come out. Gary Bullock, the man who murdered Father Eric Freed in 2013. You can look this up. Google Father Eric Freed, Eureka, California. He was part of the occult. occult. He was part of satanic worship, worshiping Satan, glorifying the devil, being part of all that is evil. He carved satanic images and symbols on Father Eric's body. And he said he acted as an agent of Satan in killing Father Eric Freed. What have we done with our children today? They are obsessed with tattooing 666 on their body and giving their lives to the devil. There's videos that I have posted of couples who come to see me where their children have turned violent. They've gone mad after they've tattooed 666 on their body or after they have given their lives over to Satan. We allow children to participate in witchcraft, dress as witches, Satan worship, violent satanic movies. This is precisely what the news is saying Salvador Ramos was part of. And this stuff sells. That's why Hollywood promotes it. Salvador Ramos was violent and aggressive before yesterday programmed by a violent culture and society. And there are videos of Salvador Ramos fighting people in the park with boxing gloves, randomly trying to pick fights with people. He would carry fighting boxing gloves around with him, imitating WWE, the world wrestling, entertainment, and other things that he saw. Where did he learn all of this? Not from the Bible, not from Jesus, not from faith, from television, from violent video games, and from our culture and society. What should our response be to all of this? Look up Father Eric Fried's two sisters' reactions when Father Eric was killed and Gary Bullock was being sentenced. He has two sisters, one of them a committed Christian and another one not a Christian. At the sentencing, the one who isn't a Christian got up and started saying, I hate you, she said to Gary Bullock. I hate you. I wish that I could pull the trigger I wish that I could insert the needle into your arm. And the other sister, a committed Christian, got up and said, you know, you have just heard my sister tell you she hates you, but I don't hate you, she said to Gary Bullock, the man who murdered and tortured her brother, I don't hate you. I love you. In the name of Jesus, I love you. And before my brother Eric was buried in the ground, I have forgiven you because I follow Jesus. And you know what Gary Bullock started to do? 
when the sister who isn't a Christian was telling him how much she hates him, he was laughing. But when the sister who is a Christian told him she loves him and she forgives him, he started to cry. Because love changes hearts. Love melts hearts of stone. Only love can win. Only forgiveness can win. Not hate. We respond to hate with love. We don't respond to hate with more hate. When Salvador Ramos got angry with his grandma, he took out a gun and shot her because that's the solution we give our children. And that would be the solution society would give Father Eric's two sisters. And one of them bought it. And the other one injected herself with the teachings of Jesus Christ, a non-violent man who lived 2000 years ago, who was killed by violence and did not respond to violence with violence. Mm -hmm. Society taught Salvador Ramos that he should take out his frustrations with guns and violence. This is what we teach our kids. Parents hurting their children. Domestic violence is at levels we have never seen before. So much domestic violence. Look at police reports. Couples hurting each other, husbands hitting their wives, wives hitting their husbands, parents hitting, hitting, hitting their children, slapping them. No wonder that's what happened during the Oscars. Salvador Ramos was bullied over a lisp and a speech impediment and didn't know how to deal with this. So he resolved resorted to violence. He would cut his face. Read the news reports. He cut his face, not just cut himself somewhere where people couldn't see it. He cut his face with a knife. He cut his face with a knife. Hurting himself. What do the kids do today to deal with stress, depression, and anxiety, and their frustrations? They cut themselves. Violence, huh? Violent video games, rapes. That's what they watch in pornography that they can access readily. People raping people, that's the most popular pornography around. Horrific sex, gang rapes, shootings. Hmm? That's what our children are exposed to. Salvador Ramos cut his face over and over again. Salvador Ramos egged and keyed people's vehicles for fun. Mm -hmm. He would shoot at strangers with a BB gun from his car. I'm asking myself, how does a teenager get a BB gun? Hello? <laughs> Ramos on his Instagram would tag and tag people to photos of guns. He was obsessed with guns and violence as we are as a nation. I walk into people's homes and I see what they're watching on television. They wanna show me violence. Let's watch a violent movie. No, let's watch a love movie, huh? Lifetime, huh? No, our kids, our, our kids don't do that anymore, huh? No, it's all violence and blood. His Instagram account featured stories of semi-automatic firearms. It featured violent video games of guns and shootings with lines like, kids be scared. His Instagram has rifles, 
AR-15s with high-capacity magazines, images of gun magazines. He was aggressive to his mom in videos on Instagram, calling her the B-word, kicking and screaming. His text messages had to do with violence and guns and ammunitions. And he says, I look different now. No one will recognize me when he would dress up with guns. He said, I'm powerful because that's what we have trained our kids to think that power means having guns. Power means, you know, shooting people. Huh? That's what we have trained our kids to do. Huh? He says, look at me now. I'm powerful. He was bullied because of his clothes and because he was poor and he had dreams of grandeur and power and society and culture and culture taught him that these come not from service, not from love, not from faith, not from forgiveness, not from hard work, but society and culture taught him that these come from guns, from violence and from revenge. Huh? That's what we have done. His friends tell us now that he played extremely violent video games called Call of Duty. Huh? He was the first person shooter in these games and he belonged to groups that would dress in dark clothes, glorifying the devil. How can you allow your children to do this? How can you allow your children to be part of groups that glorify the devil and darkness and the occult and to tattoo themselves with 666 and satanic symbols? He would practice satanic worship and dwell in the dark and listen to violent, dark, satanic music. We know this. And this is what we allow our kids to be part of. Now, my grandma told me very early on, Zyakim shestayesh, takim shestayesh. What does that mean? You look, look who you hang out with and I will tell you who you are. How can you allow your kids to be part of this stuff? He belonged to alternative groups glorifying suicide and death. War violence. This is what we have saturated our kids with and gangs. You know, when I was in Chicago, uh, as a seminarian, I lived in the Little Village neighborhood, um, the uh, Good Shepherd Parish. That was the parish that I was part of in the Little Village neighborhood. And I asked one of the kids there in the midst of all the violence that happens, thousands of people and children being killed on the streets of Chicago in our own country and in other cities. This is what we subject our kids to in our country. And I asked this young man, I said to him, I said, what will you be when you grow up? What do you want to be? I said, what will you be when you grow up? Do you want to be a doctor or a lawyer? I said to him, what will you be when you grow up? And he looks at me and he said, you mean if I grow up? You mean if I grow up, he says? Because it's not guaranteed that he will grow up. In fact, it's probable he won't. And this is what happens, in, not just in Chicago, in Los Angeles, in Las Vegas, how much violence, in Texas, everywhere. Hmm? Jesus said, those who live by the sword shall die by the sword. We are not called to live by the sword. We are called to live by forgiveness. This is what I'm calling you to. In the, in, in, to reflect on what has happened and to not allow all that hate to permeate you and to enter your heart. You are to be different, says Jesus. We are to be different. Share this live right now. I want you to share this video and put a like on it, okay, so that it, it gets more promotions, so that it's shared. Uh -huh. Let's share the video. We have to share it so that more people see this. 
because there's a lot of messages about hate right now to hate Salvador Ramos. No, 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 that, no, that's not the way of Jesus. Jesus's way is the way of love. Mm? And to reflect on what we can do to better our families. I'm giving you this reflection today because I want you to reflect about what is it that you allow in your own family with your children? Do you allow them to tattoo themselves with 666? Do you allow your children to play violent video games? Do you hit your children? Not even animals. <laughs> Not even animals kill their own kind. That's how we are as people. Mm -hmm. So reflect on this, please. Mm -hmm. You know, in your own life, you know, do you glorify people hitting people? Do you participate in watching pornography that abuses people? You know, what is it that you do in order to contribute to this and how can you change? You have to be the change you want to see in our society. Don't be saying the president, you know, the governor, the senators, this or these people. No, you, we have to be the change that we want to see. Hmm? How is it that we will be different? Huh? How is it that we will be different? I'm looking at your comments here. Call of Duty is a war game. And what happens in war, Javier says here? What happens in war? I'm, I'm reading your comments. What happens in war? Huh? Hello? I'm speaking. People get killed with guns in war. Hello? Hello, hello? I mean, come on, people. Please, let's reflect. You're just trying to justify yourselves by allowing your kids to watch all that garbage. Stop justifying your actions that you've bought guns for your kids to play with. That you let them play violent video games. That you bought them a BB gun. That you hit them. And that they turn around and hit their brothers and sisters. What are we teaching our children? You know, they, they deal with stress by cutting themselves. That's what children do today. They cut themselves. That's why he was cutting his face. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Instead of teaching our children to deal with their stress, with faith, with love, let's talk about things. Huh? Somebody's hurt you. They've bullied you. How do you react to that? He was bullied because he was poor. Because he didn't have clothes. Because his, his grandmother couldn't afford it to buy it for him. I haven't read this, but he, it sounds like he was from a, a, a family where his grandmother raised him. Uh, this child... This child had a lot of needs that were not being met. Nobody addressed his needs. This stuff was all over his social media. Nobody paid attention to it. Nobody. Now all of a sudden, you know, people around him are waking up. Hello? Where were the adults around him when he was bullied? I was bullied when I was in school and nobody helped me. Nobody. Thank God that I found Jesus. But we don't give Jesus to our young people today. No, we don't give them faith. No, we give them violent video games. Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, we give them pornography on their phones. Huh? Yeah. We don't give them Jesus. We don't give them faith. We don't give prayer. Uh -huh. Reflection and meditation. No, none of that. Uh -huh. Exactly. 
Zinnia says he needed help and no one cared enough. That's right. Nobody cared. Exactly. And now this is the results. Huh? It takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. And let's not blame his parents or his grandma or whoever. It takes a village to raise a child. Let's not blame people. Let's reflect on what we could have done. Huh? Exactly. Laurie says attention and love was needed. Exactly. Huh? That's exactly it. Hmm? Yeah, and, and it's the parents responsibility before God, their children's upbringing and not the government's. Exactly. You know, the parents are the first teachers of their children and what they allow them to be part of. Hmm? Exactly, exactly. So, you know, go ahead and comment. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be uh, reading them. Ruth says, many kids are very good at hiding their stuff. Well, he didn't. It was all over his social media. <laughs> the whole neighborhood knew it. He cut his face, you know. So, let me give you all a blessing as we continue to pray. Let's pray right now for all those children who have died, their families, for Salvador Ramos and for his family and for everybody there affected in that community and for our nation in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit, flow, flow. Allow us to breathe the air of love, the air of forgiveness that soothing air that will comfort us to know that everything is going to be okay, to make us reflect, oh Holy Spirit, how we can be agents of change and not agents of blame, not agents that point fingers, but agents that breathe the air of comfort and hope that things will change if we become part of the change. And so we pray, O oh Lord, that that Holy Spirit, the Comforter, will comfort those families to know that their kids have not died. They've just changed places. They went from an earthly existence to an eternal existence. And that as people of faith, we do not say goodbye, but we say, see you later. Hasta la vista. O oh, Holy Spirit, flow with your wisdom that we may reflect on what we can do better as a nation, as a society, to change, to change our behavior. As we pray always, glorifying you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, hello. And now remember, sharing is caring. And many of you have not shared. Hmm? People need to hear this message. So if you haven't shared, what's wrong? Hello, sharing is caring. Hello, hello. Sharing is caring. Click that share button right now. I want you to share this right now with all your contacts, everybody on your Facebook and everywhere else. And make TikToks out of this, okay? Make Instagrams, TikToks, share it everywhere. Everybody needs to hear this message.